Health care in the Philippines for Australian expats. Health care is an essentially important issue to anybody intending to settle and live permanently in the Philippines as an expat Australian. Many of us are getting older and new families often mean more doctoring is needed than for single Aussie men. It's something you should consider very carefully and not just assume that it will all be just fine. I write this now because a friend of ours is just out of hospital in Manila after a pretty awful few weeks and to be honest he was not prepared in any way. As usual, this is not a Philippines knocking article. This is my home and I love it here. Life here can be great, but it's a land of contrasts. It can all go very badly for the unprepared and especially the underfinanced. This is not Australia and the mistake is to assume that everything here will be as it happens as it does in Australia. And when it doesn't, to look back at Australia's healthcare system with rose-coloured glasses on, Australia has Medicare and the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme, but to me the rest of it is not always so perfect. Philippines healthcare, plenty of contrasts. Healthcare here can be wonderful and it can also be pretty ordinary. Most of it comes down to the issue of money and resources. The people, that means the doctors and the nurses, they are generally great. I'll explain a bit further though but their limitations are usually due to limited resources. Bluntly, if you live here underfunded and under-resourced, you will have problems with health care like any, anywhere else. In Australia, health care is fairly equal. You go to a public hospital and it's either free like it is in Queensland or covered largely by Medicare like it is everywhere else, but you can sit for hours in an overcrowded waiting room with the walking wounded around you whilst waiting for underpaid and often inexperienced doctors to patch you up. Need any, anything that isn't urgent and you go on a waiting list. Here, if you're poor, you could end up in the hospital from hell. If you have money, the services and treatment can be very good. Not always, but can be. The difference is that you shouldn't just assume. You shouldn't just accept all that comes your way. Not all hospitals and not all doctors are the same. Philippines Medical Services, the Harvey Experiences. Doctors, dentists, etc. Mostly you just walk in. Appointments exist, but that, that's not really the standard here. I've never known dentists to use an appointment system. Normally you just walk in. You can get a tooth pulled for about 500 pesos. Compare that to Australia, especially in regional areas. One year waiting lists and $400 to get a tooth removed. We have family doctors here. Uh, the wife is a GP, they don't really use that term here. Um, and the husband is a surgeon. And we've been with them since we came here years ago. And we trust them absolutely. And there's none of this, you know, no more than three minutes or it's not profitable bulk billing side effect that you get in Australia. If it, if the consultation takes 30 minutes, then so be it. Um, normally 200 pesos for a consultation, and that is fairly standard here. And there are specialists everywhere. No referrals necessary. Uh, if you've got blood pressure problems, heart problems, you go and see a cardiologist. Uh, I've had Singapore ear, which is a tropical fungal ear infection thing. Um, when I need that treated, I go and see an ear, nose and throat specialist. That's just there in the local town. And at last time we called and he came came to my home and treated me right here. Paid him a little bit extra, but it was still cheap. Um, we had a two-year-old child visiting us. He stuck his finger into a fan, um, the fan metal blade. Uh, cut halfway through his finger. Local hospital, he had microsurgery, they were sewing the veins back together. He was in hospital for a few days. Uh, the bill was 40,000 pesos in total. Now that's not bad for saving his index finger. Um, I just had some blood tests and urine analysis the other evening. Same hospital, seen to immediately. Results back in two hours. 
along with interpretation, at, that cost 360 pesos. Um, yet we've also had one of our kids in another hospital a few years back with a fever of 40, 40 degrees Celsius. The nursing staff checked her every four hours only. I had to go and basically, well, literally abuse them over that one because I thought that was fairly disgraceful. Um, here they expect the family members to stay in the hospital room itself 24 hours a day um, and the family do the taking care of. Basically, the nurses don't seem to do very much. Um, mind you, you need to understand many of these hospitals have nursing graduates working for them. They work there for 12 months for free um, and they need that in order to apply for their board license, which is their registration. And even when they they when they're qualified and they're actually getting paid, they might only be getting six to eight thousand pesos a month. After that, so I mean, it's not much to really inspire them to greatness. You need to understand, but uh, they did almost nothing for the poor kid. They replaced her drip dextrose. They recorded her temperature. That that was it. Um, you know, they didn't wash her anything. Um, we had her daughter Maggie admitted when she was six months old and we were overseas in Singapore for a few days. Um, she also had a 40 degree temperature. But, uh, she was admitted, you know, they bought her sinigang and rice for her meal. She was six months old and, you know, I didn't really think the whole thing through. Um, after 24 hours, not a single doctor had actually looked at her, so we, we discharged her. Um, and they bought a wheelchair for her to leave. So, I mean, they didn't even think that through. We haven't been back to that hospital. So, yes, you can get some very awful hospitals. The point being that you need to investigate. You need to ask around. Um, if you like the treatment somewhere, you should go back again. And you should try to get the best treatment the money can buy. However, um, on to the next bit. The syndrome of being the rich white man, even if you're not rich at all. Uh, medical care facilities in the Philippines are businesses, just like they are in Australia, but here they are truly owned by private individuals, wealthy families and investors. And regardless of how caring the staff may be, or may wish they could be, they need to toe the line, they need to make profit for the boss. That's how they keep their jobs. Um, our friend was added with kidney stones and a, and a bowel infection. He you know, left everything very, very late until it was very, very serious before before he went. Uh, he'd really waited for too long. Um, but because he was an Australian, they put him in a private room. Now, he needed a couple of operations, I think, and and he had dialysis. He was in there for about three weeks. Now, they asked to be moved to a cheaper ward, but they refused, claiming that those cheap awards were only for poor Filipinos. Little did they know that he was really no better off than, you know, many of the Filipinos. The bill was clearly loaded. Um, you know, one item, a little sachet type, you know, orange juice that he was, you know, drink that he was drinking. You know, they charged those out at 256 pesos every time. Um, I mean, you would expect that in the you know, from a nice drink at the Sheraton or something, not in an ordinary hospital. So, you know, the bill was clearly loaded. It ended up being around 700,000 pesos by the time he, he finally got out of there. Um, now, that would never happen to me um, because I have a very clever and a very suspicious-natured wife who would have been asking questions uh, all the way along and would have yelled at them if needed. Um, Plus, we're aware that you cannot try to live like a poor man here and expect that the system will take care of you as it basically will in Australia. You must be prepared for emergencies, and that means having substantial savings or at least a reliable source of funds to cover such emergencies, or you can find yourself in some fairly tragic circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it and you would like to subscribe, you can click on the little button down the bottom corner there and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Um, there are regular articles on aspects of Australian visas to the Philippines on www.downundervisa.com.au There is a blog page you can subscribe to. There is a free visa assessment form. And there are regular articles on aspects of Australian-Filipino relationships which you can see on www.filipinowives.com.au um, If you can please share these articles and these videos on any of the social media that you use we would appreciate that. Thank you.